Cryptography is much more secure today than it was even just a few decades ago. Before modern cipher methods were invented, if you were somehow able to obtain part of the plain text for an encrypted message, then it could be possible for you to reconstruct the settings that were used to encrypt that message, and from there potentially decrypt the rest of the message or decrypt entirely different messages that were using those exact same settings. This process of breaking encryption is called a known plain text attack. There are four steps to this attack. First, the attacker is going to obtain the encrypted message. Second, without decrypting the message, they're going to identify the plain text for parts of the encrypted message. Third, assuming that the attacker knows what type of cipher method is being used, they will try to use different settings with that cipher method until they find a combination of settings that will get a result where there is a match between the cipher text and the known plain text. And now finally, they can decrypt other messages using these exact same settings. So this type of attack is very effective against classical ciphers, such as a substitution cipher. And a great example of this working in action is actually back in World War II. So in World War II, the Nazis used a device called the Enigma machine to encrypt their messages. And this is what that machine looks like. You can see in the center there, um, there is a keyboard and some rotors. Now the operator would configure these rotors. They'll put them in different orders. They will turn them to different settings to create these different electrical pathways within the machine. And as the operator typed on the keyboard, a signal at the top, uh, at the top on that cover there, a signal would go through the machine and illuminate a light, which would indicate the letter of the ciphertext version of the, the plain text. And so you type in an A, it goes through all the wiring, the light turns on on the T letter. And so what the operators would do is they would type out their entire message, they would record the, the letters from the lights, and then they will send out that message that would be the encrypted version of the message. The receiver would then need to know the correct settings within, uh, within their machine the exact same settings that were used by the person that was sending the message, and then they would be able to decrypt the message by using those settings. Now, cracking the Enigma machine was really a big challenge for the allies because even if they captured one of these machines, the configurations would change every single day. So the allies wouldn't be able to decrypt future messages unless they were able to obtain the new configurations. So the British found a way to crack the Enigma by using a known plain text attack. They knew that certain messages had a standard structure. So for example, if they saw some messages coming from a weather station, they knew that that weather station would give a forecast and all the forecasts started with the German words for weather prediction. And so if the allies were able to intercept enough of these types of messages where they knew the structure, they knew what some of the words would be, that would give them enough information to run a known plain text attack. And if you have seen the movie, The Imitation Game, this should sound a little familiar to you because that's exactly what they're depicting in the movie. And that's what uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is trying to solve throughout that movie. He's trying to find the method that will take in these known plain texts and put it through a machine and come out with the decrypted message. That would he, that's what he's trying to do. So the idea here is that if they were able to intercept a message, uh, they might get something that looks like what you might expect on the right side here. This is some ciphertext. But because they knew the message came from a weather station and they knew that all messages from the weather station are starting with weather prediction, then this would give them the valuable information to find the correct settings for the, uh, for the Enigma. So what they were doing was they were looking for the set of combinations where the weather predict, where, where basically like weather prediction, if you typed weather prediction into the machine, it would generate the beginning part of that ciphertext, the Y, G, C, V, J. And so um, they, would, they would find the settings where typing in, 
typing in W would get you Y, or if you're going backwards the other way, Y would get you W. Uh, then G and E and C and A and, and, and then V and T. So they would go through all of that um, and they would be able to create the mappings to, to decrypt that part of the message. Now, I am highly oversimplifying the way that the Enigma machine works. In reality, the substitution mapping here would change after every single character that was typed. So um, you, you wouldn't be able to say Y is always W when you're trying to decrypt it, and G is always E when you're trying to decrypt it. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But the core concept is the same. You, if you keep just trying different combinations of settings within the machine, you will eventually be able to get to the point where you can type in that known plain text, that weather prediction, and then get the YGCVJ. And once you're able to do that, you'll be able to decrypt the rest of the message. Now, this is going to require enough plain, known plain texts to be able to accurately do this. Um, but it's very easy to tell whether it worked or not. Uh, you're you're going to get gibberish and you're not going to be able to read the message at all, or it's going to be readable. Um, and you just keep trying different settings until you get the combination that will decrypt the message. Now, the really big challenge that they depict in the movie, The Imitation Game, is the fact that you have to go through this process of finding out the combination every single day because... Once you, uh, because once the new day is reached, the combinations would change. And so you wouldn't be able to decode any of the new messages. You could still decode the old messages, but that's not as helpful. The allies wanted to be able to decrypt all of the messages that were being sent in real time. They didn't want to have to uh, decode messages five days late and then be able to, to know what the Germans said five days ago. They wanted to know what the Germans said today. And so that was the really big challenge that they were trying to solve. And that's what um, they were doing, Alan Turing was doing uh, with cracking the Enigma. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to run a known plain text ourselves and a known plain text attack ourselves through a lab. And I've got two tools here for you to try out as we go through this lab. The first one is a tool to help us encrypt our messages. And the second one is a tool to help us decrypt our messages. So we've got Planet Calc Substitution Cipher Tool. You can go on Google, type that. You can find that. That's how we're going to encrypt our messages. And type in Quip Quip into Google. Again, you'll get the site. That's what we're going to use to decrypt those messages. So let's go into the lab here. So what I've got right now is the planet calc decryption tool that we're going to use. And I've typed in a message. So I'm typing in the weather today is quite warm. In our example here, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the British, so us, when we are going to decrypt it, we know that the message is going to start with the words, the weather. And that's all the information that we're going to have when we try to decrypt this message. And what this the substitution cipher tool in Planet Calc is going to do is it's going to take in our plain text message there. And you can see below that is this key, this key right here that I'm highlighting. And so you can see the alphabet at the top and you can see our key at the bottom. So every single letter of the alphabet in the key at the top is being mapped to another character of the alphabet on the bottom. And so every time we type in A, in the plain text, that's going to turn into a C in the ciphertext when it's encrypted. And we have that key for the entire alphabet. And so when I hit calculate, I get our transformed text over here. And this is what we're going to try to, uh, to decrypt using QuipQuip. And so I'm going to refresh QuipQuip here. And what QuipQuip is, it is a cryptogram solver, which does a lot of fancy stuff 
on our behalf, stuff that they didn't have back during World War II, uh, where it is looking at like frequency analysis. So it's seeing how frequently certain characters show up in the English language, and it's using that to guess what some of the mappings might be for some of the characters. It's also looking at word boundaries. And so it's got some pretty sophisticated tools by itself to try to decrypt the message. And so if I paste in our message here and I hit solve, it's going to try to guess what this translates into. And you can see that it, in some of these guesses, it's kind of close, but it's not quite sure. You've got the leather today is quite large. The leather to man is quite large. There's a lot of things in here that don't make sense, but they have the correct in some of these weather is in here. Warm is over here. So it's able to make able to make some of these educated guesses. But if we use a known plain text attack and we can tell Quip Quip that, hey, we know that this V um, is actually a T because the weather as our known plain text starts with the T and this T matches to the V over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in V equals T and this will let Quip Quip know, hey, every time you see a V, put in a T. And all of these different guesses that Quip Quip is showing us is going to basically be the equivalent of what the uh, the bomb machine, that's the, the British machine that was being used to break the Enigma, it's going to be the equivalent of what that machine was trying to uh, to output when it was guessing the combinations of characters. So as we have more plain text, we should get better guesses as to what the decrypt decrypted message would be. Because right now, uh, Quip Quip is just trying to guess what the translation is between the cipher text and the plain text and it doesn't have very much information to make those guesses it's guessing based on like how frequently letters show up in the english language if we can give it some clues based on the known plain text it's going to get more and more accurate and eventually it should be able to give us the exact plain text without us having to do the mapping for every single character in the alphabet which is pretty cool so we'll start with v equals t and see how much that helps Eh, not not quite much. So let's let's do the next one. Uh, the next one would be we've got J equals H. Still not quite there. G equals E. All right. So we're gonna have to do quite a few of these. I I have I've I've done some of these mappings in advance, so we can hopefully speed this up a little bit. So if I just give it a couple more, let's see what it comes up with. So now if we give it one, two, three, four, five, six, six pairings, it's able to have the weather is quite warm. The weather today is quite warm as the second guess, right? That's pretty impressive. We only told it six mappings and it's able to have the correct answer as it's second most likely guess. If we give it a couple more, we should be able to actually get the entire message. Hopefully. No? <laughs> v equals T, J equals H, G equals E, Y equals W, C equals A, T equals H, Q equals O, F equals D, A equals Y. Uh, it still didn't quite get it, but it's getting it's getting much, much closer. And um, you could probably go through the rest of the of the the word here. Are we missing anything? I don't think we're factoring in the R. But yeah, even with just even just with this small number of pairings four four pairings and it's able to guess the weather today is quite warm as the as a, as a second option this is how a, a known plain text attack works you can see here an example of why you might need to have multiple messages and multiple known plain texts because 
if we if we if we don't have enough, we might not be able to be definitive on our on our translation here on our mapping. If we get more messages, that's more data that we can use to confirm if we're able to do the decryption correctly. You can go in and you can use Planet Calc and you can change the mapping here. You can try different messages and, and use QuipQuip and see like how good is QuipQuip in solving the challenges just by themselves, uh, so solving the, uh, the messages just by themselves. And how much is it helped by providing the known plain text to run this attack? It's definitely a cool tool to play around with. Even without the known plain text, QuipQuip is very useful for breaking substitution ciphers just because of the tools that it has with doing the frequency analysis. So I highly recommend using QuipQuip as a tool for you to go and play around with substitution ciphers, try to break them, try them out firsthand. Um, definitely way easier than getting a real Enigma machine and trying to play with the hardware that way. But thanks for watching today. Make sure you check out the rest of our YouTube channel. We got plenty of videos covering different topics in cybersecurity. There's actually a whole playlist there that uh, lists them all out. So thanks again for joining. Good luck with your cybersecurity learning and keep hacking.